Hello, my name is Alexander Smith Stalker. Today I would like to discuss with you my viewpoint regarding the ethics surrounding a case study. The case I'm referring to is one in which a 22 year old female by the name of Karen Quinlan became brain dead after two 15 minute periods of lack of oxygen, which left her in a comatose and vegetative state that she would never be anticipated to recover from. At this point, Ms. Quinlan is in a state where she is no longer aware of outside stimulus nor able to respond to it. All of her actions are instead reflexive. When a patient is reduced to only conducting reflexive responses, I would argue there is no longer any attainable quality of life. Although Ms. Quinlan may still have some basic bodily functioning, she cannot process nor respond to any forms of communication or take care of herself. Ms. Quinlan had held several discussions with various individuals close to her, uh, where she ex had expressed that if she were ever to be extremely debilitated in some way, that she would not want to have extreme measures to keep her living. Her father was aware of this and attempted to become her guardian so he could cease the life-sustaining measures as he believed would be her wish. He was met with opposition by the hospital prosecutors, the guardian ad litem, and the trial court who refused his pleas. This decision, Ms. Quinlan's father then appealed and the matter was addressed in the Supreme Court, where the judge ruled that as long as a physician believed that it was within sanctioned medical practices to remove the life support devices, then it was the daughter's right to privacy for these measures to be discontinued by her father. Doctors examining her concluded that she was in a chronic comatose state that would not improve after thorough testing and examination. However, because the results of certain tests, they did not deem her fully brain dead. Because they still found her to have minimal control of some automatic regulatory brain stem function, such as blood pressure, heart rate, and body temperature control, they stated that she was not what they described as biologically dead. This ultimately was the reason why the physicians could not justify removing the respirator. To this day, Ms. Quinlan remains on a respirator in the hospital and continues to be in a state of progressive decline, now emaciated with contractures, deformity, and severe muscle wasting. The conditions that this incident left her in are in di direct disagreement with how she expressed she wished to live. I believe the action taken by uh, on her was a refusal of acknowledgement of individuals' right to privacy and right to self-determination, and is therefore unethical as they disregarded this patient's free will. The ruling bodies in this case exhibited egoism in their decision-making, regulating individuals' decisions based on their own beliefs. I don't believe that this is ethical, as I believe everyone should have their own free will. As the philosopher Kant outlined in his moral principles, Kant believed in respecting each individual's dignity and respecting their freedom to choose for themselves. This is consistent with ideals surrounding rights ethics. However, as one dives deeper into Kantian ethics, there are some conflicts. Kant states that when there is a conflict in rights, one must assess which right has priority. Kant believed that killings oneself is in direct violation with moral law, so one can assume he would not be permissive of assisted suicide and would instead agree with the Supreme Court ruling. However, must, one must also consider that he was an 18th century philosopher and that he did not specifically outline rules regarding discontinuing life support. And because such a thing was not a possibility during a time in which he was alive, we can only hypothesize his ideas regarding such a situation. He endorses individuals' rights to freely choose, so this argument of suicide being in disagreement with moral law seems to conflict with many core Kantian ethics. If we were to translate Kantian ethics and also apply rights ethics to this situation, I believe the patient's verbal expression of her advanced directives and also her father's wishes should have superseded the hospital and also the court's ability to impose on the matter. I believe how the decision-making was made was unethical and that the patient's free will should have been respected and prioritized. My stance is in alignment with the ethical principle of autonomy. Autonomy is considered the personal right to self-governance and free will. What occurred in this case acted in direct disagreement with Karen Quinlan's right to autonomy. Thank you for listening to my assessment of this case study.